From KPRC2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. This is the start of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, a topic that unfortunately is all too familiar as we see scenes played out almost daily in our newscasts. As recently last week, a husband shot his wife while she held their baby. He was later shot and killed by police. It happens way too much. One in four women and one in ten men will experience domestic or sexual violence in their lifetime, says the Houston Area Women's Center. In the United States, 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner. That from the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. And closer to home, 30 percent of homicides so far this year in unincorporated Harris County are domestic violence related. It is clearly a challenge on many levels, including law enforcement. Tracking down and prosecuting those responsible for this kind of violence falls at the doorstep of law enforcement and the judicial system. But what about those who are left behind? Police officers on the front lines have faced that problem for years and most recently have put a system into place to help. Joining me this morning to talk about that, Carvana Cloud, the deputy director for HPD's Office of Community Affairs, HPD Lieutenant Julie Pleasant, uh, who co-founder along with Ms. Cloud of HPD's Domestic Abuse Response Team, or DART, that program set up within HPD to get some help for victims who otherwise might not, might not have it. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you, Kim, Appreciate for having it. us. So you both were involved in all of this. Tell me how this relationship came about, because you're now in HPDs, but you were prosecuting and you were HP. How did yes. this work? So I was a prosecutor at the time at the Harris County District Attorney's Office and I noted a very large spike in strangulation cases, high risk cases and domestic violence homicides. I knew that we had to do something to deal with getting to the root causes of domestic violence and try to figure out how do those cases go from uh, small cases but escalate and then sadly into homicide. So I started thinking about a mobile system that would take us out into the community would pair law enforcement, social workers and forensic nurses together to make sure that survivors had that immediate response so they wouldn't go back. And what is the chance that while you're thinking about that in the prosecutor's <laughs> office, you and HPD are thinking about something very similar? Correct. We were building our, our staffing so that we could take on such an amazing task of sending uh, victim advocates out into the field coupled with a officer, mm -hmm. uh, both being trauma informed so that they could respond to a scene uh, after the primary officer taking care of the law enforcement business and immediately address the, the needs and safety concerns of that victim while on scene and then have a domestic violence forensic nurse there to actually be able to uh, help take the burden of evidence off the he said, she said courtroom uh, trying to testify against a loved one for many years uh, and then have the family backlash, culture backlash, financial backlash, uh, trying to assist in all that and in the total breaking the cycle, we had to have community partners and so that's what we worked on. How important is it from a police officer standpoint to know that that part is being taken care of by DART as opposed to before, you, you on the scene, you got to do all kinds of different, how much a difference does it make to know that DART's there? Well, I think for law enforcement, you know, we're tasked to do a whole lot of things. So we're supposed to be mental health care providers, we're supposed to be social workers, and we can't be all things to everyone. So thanks to One Safe Houston and what we've done with uh, some of our uh, financial assistance through the mayor's office and Chief Fenner, we have been able to put these programs to bulk up these programs and assist citizens where they are. So for law enforcement, it means that we can handle the law enforcement side and we don't have to worry about, can we find shelter this for this family of six? That's a huge, that's a huge burden to an officer who knows that we didn't arrest the suspect, that he still, or she may be out there, he or she may be out there still uh, waiting for us to leave to come back, right. but now we have a partner. We can make sure that they're safe. Uh, Deputy Director Cloud, this has been a passion of yours. You, yes. you know, so talk about what it must feel like for you to know this is up and running and you got extra money for this program through the CARES Act, did you not? Yes, that helps. yes, yes. So I, I'm a survivor, a child survivor of domestic violence. Uh, my mom is, uh, was, is a survivor. Uh, so I experienced domestic violence growing up and so I remember laying awake at night just praying that God, if you allow me to get out of this, mm -hmm. I promise I will do everything that I can to make sure women like my sweet, amazing mother and myself as a child don't have to go through this. DART is a dream come true. Uh, we always give homage to Los Angeles 
that initial concept of our work started in Los Angeles. Uh, so we are grateful for them and what they've shared. But we've taken that program and made it something that provides holistic services that mm -hmm. deals with all portions of support, as Julie said, uh, that survivors need to be able to move forward. And when I was, uh, before I came to HPD, I received money from the CARES Act to uh, launch the Empowered Survivor Project. And it worked hand in hand with DART uh, because we were the provider that was there along with the Houston Area Women's Center and others to take those survivors in, provide emergency shelter, but also to set them up in apartments and more long-term solutions mm -hmm. because we didn't want it just to be for the moment because we know that the, the consequences and the trauma of domestic violence, they're long-lasting. So people don't really know about this ahead of time. I mean, somebody who's on the receiving end of domestic violence situation, they're not sitting there thinking, well, maybe DART can... They don't know about that until they actually are imp impacted by this. What kind of feedback do you get from the people who have received the services from DART? Well, I have recently been in contact with the, one of our survivors, and uh, she said that she don't, she re truly doesn't know where she would be. Um, she had suicidal thoughts uh, prior to intervention because she just didn't know how she was going to carry the weight of uh, the loss of a child in, in her horrific circumstance. It was a shooting much like what we started with, but in Houston, uh, actually a year ago. So uh, this happens over and over again. So in order for men and women to leave situations, they do need assistance. They need community assistance. They need our nonprofits, our service providers in our nonprofits and community organizations to come together to be able to give that. So we're telling people about the programs that the Houston Police Department is offering through the DART program. We hope that they never have to have this service. That's, That's correct. Absolutely. What do you tell people, uh, as we finish this segment here right now, what do you tell people about what they should do if they find themselves in a domestic violence situation? Absolutely. Uh, I am so proud to live in a city like the city of Houston with a mayor and a chief who allows us to have resources so when Vic survivors call 911, they'll get this type of help. So I proudly say if you find yourself in that situation and you feel like you're going to be harmed or you're hurt, call 911 because DART's going to show up and that's a different experience than most have had with the city of Houston and HPD. Mm -hmm. But so call 911. If you're not able or don't feel comfortable with reaching out to law enforcement, reach out to the Houston Area Women's Center. Uh, they, I know that they have a, a hotline. Uh, they have been amazingly supportive of this program. Uh, and they'll get you the help that you need. But you don't have to suffer in silence. Deputy Director Cloud, Lieutenant Pleasant, thank you for all you do. Thank this is an amazing program. We hope no, as I said, we hope no one ever needs it. That's but right. if you do need it, it's good to know that it's there. Thank you for what you do. We thank you for having us, Kimberly.